Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Biblical Brawlers Podcast, where we teach the truth and unteach the garbage. Well, I'm John Whitaker. And I'm Derek Drury. And we are the pastors of New Day Christian Fellowship, and that's a church right in the heart of the inner city of Springfield, Ohio. Now, the Biblical Brawlers Podcast is a tool that we've put together to help the church to learn what God is really saying in His Word. We aim to bring out the true context of the Bible as a whole in order to aid in the dissolving of the great confusion that is going on today in the midst of the body of Christ. We're not here to fight against people per se, but we are here to fight for the truth and rightly divide the Word of God as it says we must do in 2 Timothy 2.15. That's right. And with that said, we are going up, up, and away in our beautiful balloon so for today's topic. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, uh, well. He's so proud of these two. I, I really, I <laughs> really am. Well, I don't know if proud's the right, right. word. Um, but, uh, but anyways. Um, okay, so in all seriousness, um, we go from that to seriousness. You know, that's how we like to do it here. Um, we're going to be talking today about another very important and controversial subject. Um, yes, uh, yeah. the Will Smith slap. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. man! So you're going to be Chris Rock, and I'm going to be—I'll be Will Smith. <laughs> that's right. We're, that's right. I mean, that's what everybody's talking about. Yeah. This so week we'll, is... we'll get a bunch of clicks if we. Uh, yeah. Let's just talk about that. I know. Well, now it's turned into a verb. Like I'll, <laughs> right. I'm going to Will Smith you. you <laughs> there know, you go. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was quite something. Mm. We could do some some teaching on that, huh? Mm. On how not to well, how not to do a lot of things, <laughs> right? But, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's 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 true. Mm. Um, well, well, in the uh, in the topic here today, it it, it, it is another controversial situation. Um, I know that I personally. So we're gonna try something different, like tried to. To maybe do a little controversy this week, right. as opposed to all our other podcasts. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just just, just this one time, we're gonna <laughs> right. see how it, yeah. see how that lands. You know, oh. speaking of balloons, it might yeah. go over like a lead balloon. Yeah. Um, oh. But <laughs> uh, um, you know, I know that you've been in conversations with the with people about this too, and I know that I have been in countless conversations um, through my life, really. Mm-hmm. You know, and have been, uh, especially as a pastor, have been told on occasions that I have to, I have got to start doing this. Um, Well, in light of defending the true gospel against twistings and turnings and additions and subtractions, um, we are going to take another biblical stance here. Um, And it might not be um, the popular one, you Mm -hmm. know, but we're going to take the biblical stance and give the basic history in regards to altar calls, and the sinner's prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're going to challenge the modern day traditional thinking, you know, here. And, and uh, you, you listeners might be surprised at what we have to say. Maybe you won't be, um, you know, but um, yeah, you, you might be surprised at what we have to say tonight. Yeah. And, and I think um, like some of our podcasts, uh, we... <sighs> Like we like to kind of like we talked about, like we like to go into the history. Um, it's some podcasts are more of a a, a conversation. Some mm-hmm. are, are are more of a of a of a teaching of of going through a lot of specific things. So like, there's going to be a little bit more of of that tonight. Yeah. Um, so I kind of just want to say that up front. So like, Derek might be talking a little bit more, just kind of going over yeah, um, yeah. some of this, and uh, it might yeah. seem like a didactic classroom <laughs> setting, right? going through a bunch of, of history and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah. Know. But, uh, but that being said, like we, this is a very important topic. And like you said, it's something that uh, we've, we both come across. We've both had conversations about with, with people. Um, and that is, that is the sinner's prayer, you know, um, people, you know, we've, it's been to our church, you know, they've recommended to us like, Hey, why aren't you doing this? Or, you know, yeah. you know, if there's one thing I, I like to talk to you about, like what, you know, maybe we should be doing this. And, mm-hmm. um, and so these are conversations the that grow we, more if you do mm-hmm. this and, you know, and that and the other, uh, everybody always has, um, tangible suggestions yep. like that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mm-hmm. And, and and they're probably right. The the church might grow a little little bit more, but <laughs> it, are, are we growing the right things? Right, you know, right. right? Are we growing the right fruit? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it is it numbers or is it or is, yeah or is fruit? it going to last? Yeah. Is it fruit that's going to last exactly. And, mm-hmm. 
And too, when we when we hit on these uh, these controversial topics, you know, like we really we are not doing this to be controversial, mm-hmm. you know, to, you know, to, to be, um, confrontive or, or, you know, um, in that way, it's, these really are important things and, and we've got to be willing to, um, stand up and help people to see, uh, the, the right and the wrong, mm-hmm. you know? And so, yeah. And, and I hope again, we kind of say this in all the, the podcasts, but, we we want to share our take, and then we want to show you um, the 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 biblical teaching behind it. Yeah. The the, the scripture. The, what what backs that up? Like we don't want to just stand here and give our opinion. We don't right. want to sit here and talk and be like, hey, this is this is this is what I think, and you know, um, unless our uh, opinion is backed up by the word. Right. Because if it's not, then our opinions are just stupid. Right. You know, and that's that's honestly that's how a lot of teaching is done today is by mm-hmm. opinion and. And you could you could honestly, pastors and teachers of any sort can get up and tell people just about anything, and people will buy it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. As long um, as long as you're selling what uh, what what they want to hear. Yeah, you know <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know. So and, yeah, and that and that's probably too much of what uh, some pastors get themselves into is is doing a sales job. Is you know yeah. you know trying to sell the next you know the next event or the next or or. Mm-hmm trying to convince people to come back to keep those cheeks in the seats. Yeah. And some of them probably get into it without even realizing it yep. at first, you know, and then before you no, no, you know, you have a fire that is, you got a wild fire mm-hmm. that started out as just a little match, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, with, with this one, you know, many, if not most, if not all of us here, you know, and listening have at some point or time, uh, in our lives, walked an aisle um, at a church service or a concert or an event, you know, whether a promise keepers event back in the day or whatever it would be, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and said what is known as the sinner's prayer, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I will say growing up, I probably said it a thousand times, um, I mean, multiple times a day. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was, I, I'm surprised I didn't have it written, painted mm-hmm. on my walls in my bedroom. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and, and and mine wasn't necessarily a, a a daily or weekly thing, but it was like like when like the the latest you know youth conference or yeah. you know church camp or you know like where they 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 have those really pumped up messages about like giving your life and you know um, you gave it twelve months ago, but you know you 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 hadn't followed followed it for for eleven yeah. months, so you know let's let's get back on there. That's um, right. Yeah, but. I remember a, a summer um, in particular went to a church camp and I, I was actually younger and um, it was mainly high school kids and I was probably like seventh or eighth grade and um, and I, I was baptized when I when I, when I was ten um, and there was uh, like passing the message and um, I was like I was like you know what um, I want to get baptized again you know and I remember um, calling my parents and uh, I remember my dad saying he's like. He's like you were already baptized. Like he said, we. He, he said if 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 you want to re- rededicate, like if you want to, you know, mm-hmm. um, refocus that. That's great. But he, he said, but you gave your life to Christ. We don't. <laughs> yeah. You're not. You know, every summer you're not going to get baptized every yeah. summer. Every time, you know. Yeah. Every so, time you jump in the pool, just mm-hmm. declare that this is right? the Lord. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, all that to say, like, it's something that like hits home with us. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Completely. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um. Well, usually this prayer, um, uh, if you don't already know, which most of you probably do, it's usually a prayer where the pastor or the speaker or someone else says, you know, if you are prepared to ask Jesus into your heart, repeat these words after me. And and uh, and if you say it with complete sincerity and mean it with all your heart, then you will be saved. And so most, most people, that probably sounds somewhat familiar mm-hmm. these days. Um, well... The questions, uh, what if we told you that's not biblical? Um, what if we told you that's a man-made technique? And what if we told you that it is even dangerous? Mm-hmm. Y- you know? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure people, like, their, their ears might even perked up then, like, okay, where are they? Talking? You're probably even running through scriptures in your head of trying to com- 
bat us like okay no no this it's it's there you know yeah. but you might be surprised when when you dig in it's a, a, like and we're going to talk about here like yeah um yes and some of the verses that you're probably thinking of we're gonna bring up as well yeah. but there's a lot of verses that 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 we uh conveniently you know leave out and don't don't uh, or yeah kind of just kind of ignore yeah and we're going to talk about why we say it's even dangerous mm -hmm. you know it's like we're going to hit on these why it's not biblical why it's man-made technique and why it's even dangerous you know um, and again, we want people to know that it's never our intention to mock or disrespect anyone who may disagree with us, mm -hmm. you know, on this or, or any subject. <clears throat> but it is our intention and our aim to show the truth, regardless of how any of us feels, any of us. You know? Yeah. And, and, and it's another thing, like, we're also not saying that anyone that's went to an altar call or anyone that's, you know, went to the front of the church after a sermon, like we are not saying that you're not saved because you were out at all. Cause that might be what you're hearing. You're like, well, you're trying to like, mm -hmm. like, like, no, but we, we do want to make, we'd also think there's a lot of people out there that walk down an altar call one time in their life and think they're saved and yeah, been, you boom. know, walking around for 40 years saying, Oh yeah, I, I gave my life to Christ when I was yeah. seven, you know, but haven't lived it since. And like, okay, we need to have a conversation about, you know, mm -hmm. where is eternity going for right. you? you know? And we come across that all the mm -hmm. time. Yes. You know? Um, and so with this same is regardless of that's, you know, however you're living, you need to, we should be assessing our salvation ongoing mm -hmm. anyways. Uh, you know, so, so we need to assess um, how we're living our lives for Christ period, mm -hmm. you know? So, like you just said, it, it, it's not like this horrible thing, mm -hmm. you know, that, that if someone, you know, um, if the sanctuary is open up for someone to come up and pray, mm -hmm. you know, it, that's not, that's not bad, you know, or to call the church together to the front and pray together. I mean, that would mm -hmm. be ridiculous for us to say that's yeah. a bad thing. I mean, we've done those. Yes. We call yeah. And we're, we're not just saying that that's not a bad thing. We're saying that's a very good thing. Right. Like, right. You know, yeah. Call the church up to the front. Mm -hmm. Like we, we end each service now since COVID it's kind of been like we <laughs> yeah. stand up and right. <laughs> but we used to come all the to the front and I think we're going to start doing that again here soon you know we just love it when everybody gathers around and we mm -hmm. end the service um praying together you know um but um as far as the sinner's prayer goes um it's I don't think that it's bad if someone comes down in brokenness and praise a prayer of confession at the front of the sanctuary if they are led to do so. I don't think that the words of your typical sinner's prayer are bad. It's not no. that the words are bad in themselves, okay? So it's like we got to dig through a lot of things here, um, and you got to try and head people off at the past where they're going to try and, right. and, you know, and, and get you. Um, we're not saying that the words themselves are bad or evil or stay away from those words, you know, and I, I actually do believe that in some cases it can be a true confession if, if that person has already come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ and is simply confessing that, you know, it, it's, it, but more often than not, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's not the focus, you know, um, but what we want you to all understand is that the practice of the altar call in the sinner's prayer, um, it has become so ingrained in the Christian culture now that if you don't practice them, many Christians think you are in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Like now we're in the wrong, you know, and, and, and we want to explain why that is a dangerous accusation and why these practices can be, in fact, uh, dangerous themselves, you know. Um, so you're going to have to hang with us. You're going to have to hang with us a little bit um, tonight, and we're going to do some reading, uh, you know, and uh, and you're going the, to get some history. Did you did you bring your Jesus Calling book? I forgot mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Is, is, that, is that what we're reading tonight? Like six of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're wondering, we did yeah. that a couple weeks ago, didn't right. we? Yeah. yeah, Jesus Calling. <laughs> oh, man. Um, John, do you want to read Acts 2, 14 through 21? All right. Uh, so Acts 2, 14 through 21. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and give ears to my word. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only a third of the day. 
But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last day it shall be God. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even on, even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Flood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name, calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. So, <clears throat> as it says, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Um and so this calling on his name is not simply uh, a moving of the lips and saying words aloud. And that's usually what, what people think of mm -hmm. and, and argue that, well, you, you know, you called on his name. You know, it is not simply moving your lips and saying words aloud. That, that this calling is a continual. Right. It's not a one-time thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. continual throughout our, our, our lives. It's never ending. Yep. It's, it's what we do in the morning. It's what we do throughout our day. It's what we do when we lay down. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's our lives. Yeah, exactly. We, we don't just say, um, hi and move on, you know, as, as being saved because we called on God one time, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's <laughs> so, um, it, to call, we're going to get into this here. Okay. We're going to get into what this, what this means. Uh, to call and just so you know ahead of time we're making this a two-parter um, this is part one uh, to this and then next week will be um, part two to this situation okay but uh, let's hold let's hold a thought for a minute um, and here's where I want to get into the history mm -hmm. of the sinner's prayer so you so I'm gonna kind <clears> of <throat> give the bird's eye view Mm -hmm. history here that's why we're in the up up in the balloon yeah. tonight okay because we're getting a bird's eye view of this so you're going to answer uh, is the sinner's prayer in the bible right is the sinner's prayer uh in the bible and the quick answer is no all right we're no good. and we are good yeah, and we'll cut part two beep. coming coming up <laughs> you know yeah it's, yeah. it's so Tune in next week <laughs> uh, that was great that was a great episode um but the answer is no it is nowhere nowhere in the bible are we given um, a prayer that we must say in order uh, to receive our salvation. The, the prayer as we know it, this prayer, the sinner's prayer, is actually less than 200 years old. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and even the beginnings of it were not quite um, what it has turned <clears throat> into today. You know, it has evolved, evolved quite a bit. Um, but it began out of a desire... Uh, to make the gospel easier, you know, to obtain so as to get more people into the churches and into the kingdom. Yeah, more palatable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and we're still seeing this, these mm -hmm. kind of things uh, today. Like this is, shouldn't be unbelievable to right. us, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. So there's, uh, what do they call alter uh, calls now in the metaverse or what, whatever it's oh, called. Yeah. Like, like, well, like, like, like I don't know. Uh, meta calls. <laughs> meta calls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. And they start yeah. renaming everything. Right. You know? <laughs> but but what this did was it, it it took the working out our salvation with fear and trembling trembling aspect uh, out of our salvation. Mm -hmm. It takes that out, and 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 many many people refer to a preacher named uh, Charles Finney as the father of modern revivalism or the father of the altar call. Um, and I mean, no, that's kind of a problem right there, you know, like, was it in the Bible or did, you know, why is this man called the father of the altar call? Mm -hmm. Did he perfect what was in the Bible or did he make something up, you right. know? Um, so anyways, he was a prominent preacher born in 1792 and he died in 1875. He was a revivalist known for his innovations in preaching and religious meetings. And again, that that can be an issue. That can be an issue. Yeah. Um, however, he changed the thinking of people everywhere with the way he ran his revival meetings. 
And, <clears throat> and here's something. He, he taught that revival was not a miracle of God, but that it was just a proper use of spiritual resources or constituted means. <sighs> you know, so, so now revival is like now he is saying, we just take what God gives us and we just use them properly and we can bring revival, you know. And, and so previous teachings before him said that revival was prayed down and he changed it to it is worked up. Yep. And man... Do I know what that is like from, again, from my growing up, working up that in yourself, yeah. y- you know, mm-hmm. um, and uh, it's not it's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so he said, uh, Charles Finney said of man's salvation, he says, the actual turning or change is the sinner's own act. The sinner actually changes and is therefore himself in the most proper sense, the author of of the change. Man, that is just that's just messed up right mm-hmm. there. That the that we could be the author of our salvation and our change. Yeah. Th- I mean, thank God that we're not. Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. You know, because if like we've talked about if if it was up to us, we we would lose it. We it, yeah. we would we would fall away. But because God is the author of our salvation. Like, I mean, yeah. like that's You've heard that said multiple times through the the multiple weeks that we've been on here. Is that that God is the one that draws us to Him? Yeah, it's not by our doing. Right, He's the one that gives it to us. He's the one that keeps it for us. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's just it's astounding. Um, it is just astounding <clears throat> what people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and it it goes in line with I mean a lot of the other beliefs that we've we've addressed in here, like from you know the Holy Spirit about how people use God's gifts or the, the Holy Spirit, like they think it's a tool for them to use, like to be like they can direct yes. how they want to use it. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, activate. Right. You know, that's uh, active. You've you seen that clip on speaking of like Holy Spirit activate. Have you seen that <laughs> yeah. dumb family feud thing with right. Wilson Phillips yeah. on there? Mm. Holy Spirit activate. That's the most ridiculous mm. thing. Uh, well, there's more ridiculous things. <laughs> right, yeah. But that's one well, that's of up them. To, yes. That's up there, you yeah. know. But... Instead of believing and teaching that God is the author of our salvation, as you were just saying, you know, mm-hmm. and that, that the true change can only come through him, Charles Finney taught that man himself was in control. Now, this goes in line with, uh, you know, the Bill Johnsons of, of the world right now that say God's in charge, but he's not in control, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, man, right. no, bunk. So it's a, it's a very heavy departure from Scripture. You know, and so Charles Finney, and many people love Charles Finney, Mm -hmm. but again, they don't, they don't know Charles Finney. They haven't done studies on Charles Finney, you know? Yeah. They, they hear things like thousands of people were, were, were led to Christ or get, you know, so Mm -hmm. like they're like, you know, traveling and, you know, they'll, they'll hear about the numbers and the reputation of of that, but they don't actually dig into what he was actually teaching. They just hear a result Mm -hmm. or some results, you know, and that's enough. And so, oh, what can we do to emulate this person, whether it's Finney or or anybody else, you know, um, just give me some results on paper and boom, tell me what he did to get that, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, well, uh, Finney invented all sorts of methods. Okay. All sorts of methods to affect, um, spiritual conversions. Again, it's like problem after problem after problem here. You know, it's like one of his favorite uh, things that he invented was called, it was called the anxious bench. And where he would put people in front, in the very front pew uh, of the service, and he would preach at them, like at them, you know, Mm -hmm. in such a manner that would pressure people to give in to Jesus as they sat in this seat in front of the public service. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is, uh, this is interesting. like Charles Spurgeon and other preachers of his time questioned Finney's gimmicks even, and said that such methods cheapened Christian faith. That mm-hmm. is so well put. So well put. That doesn't mm-hmm. surprise you that Charles Spurgeon 
would say that, you know, he, he knows that it, it cheapens the faith, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so anyways, uh, you know, Finney's version of the altar call was to invite people to a private meeting room after his message. He would counsel them. Okay. Not a pro not a problem so far there, right? Inviting people. Let's talk one-on-one -on -one. let's counsel, you know, pray with them. Um, and, and then, uh, have them pray, you know, for salvation. That doesn't sound so bad, but between this and the anxious bench was the beginning of the altar call being a permanent fixture in the American church. And, and so, so we can look at these and say, you know, Finney's methods no doubt produced larger numbers of supposed converts than the previous ways of telling men to plead to God for mercy. And that's what yeah. we see. That's what we see in the Bible. You know, when the guy that the tax collector comes, he can't even look to heaven. He's like mm -hmm. beating his chest saying, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Yep. That's the closest thing you would get to a sinner's prayer, begging God for mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, that's what pastors would do. They say, you know, they said, pastor, how am I saved? You know, they said, repent and believe, you yeah. know, and beg God for mercy for your soul. Yes. You know, and then... And, been, and calling you out for your your wickedness. Yes. All of us for, yes. our, for our wickedness. We all need that. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But all, altar calls, typically not calling your, your out for your wickedness. They, they're probably just calling you out because, hey, if, if you don't say this prayer, you're going to go to hell. Yeah. Like, do you want to go to hell? Well, right. No, I don't want to go to hell. We'll say this prayer. You're yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I mean, that in the short of it, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, and honestly, this reminds me too of... Uh, it's, I was young, I was like 20 and I had heard a pastor preach on the radio. So this was 25 years ago, 26 years ago. And he was preaching about how <clears throat> he met this guy that was in an accident. He was going to die. Um, and he's, you know, he said, I I'm going to say this prayer, the sinner's prayer. And if you believe just say, uh, you know, uh. and so he says the sinner's prayer, like, and he'd pause, like he could, like the guy could repeat after him, but he, he couldn't, you know, and he's like, do you believe that? And he's like, uh. I was moved incorrectly by that story and then attempted to lead a guy that I worked with in the landscaping trade uh, for a short time. Um, he, he was a, ex-prisoner is a drunk drugs and that kind of thing you know and and i said i'm gonna i'm gonna say this prayer and at the end if you believe it um man just say yes you know and he did and he, and he said it and me and the other guy the, the other guy that, that was my boss at the time you know we were all excited that this guy gave his life to the lord nothing changed whatsoever <laughs> nothing changed in his life at all you know, as a matter of fact, he went back to prison, um, got another DUI and everything, you know, and, but I, I was taught that, you know, and now I look back at that and go, oh, that just makes me nauseous, Yeah, you know? Um, yeah. And it, and it, it worries, I'm not saying for, for you, but like it, it put like on pastors, it does put a responsibility. Like, are we teach? Are, are we telling people that they're saved yep. when when they're really not? Like so, that's mm. something like hard to look back on and like, hey, is this guy walking around? Mm. You know, hate to call you out like this, Derek, but like right. you, you, yeah. you do have to look back and like, well, hey, yeah. is this guy walking around a prison? Like, yeah, yo, guys, I'm good. Like, I mean, what, whatever I do, you know, <laughs> like this dude said, if I just said, uh -huh, <laughs> right. you know, it's like, and I said it, yeah, yeah. and I said, yeah, oh. and I meant it in that moment, you yeah. know, and thank the Lord, he he has grace for ignorant. Yeah. ignorance like that you know mm -hmm. like I, I was a kid right train you know I, I mean and that hearing that on the radio that went right along with what i grew up with mm -hmm. you know um and now thank the lord I, I know better you know um but anyways you know with finney mm -hmm. again he, he got these large numbers you know but but late in his life in his own writings he admitted that he had many, many so-called converts that quickly fell away from the Christian life, you know, and, and that's something that we just uh, see all the time, you know, whereas the previous ways may not have <clears throat> seen as many right now, right now converts, um, they saw very few fall away. 
and most converts that they knew uh, of persevered in their faith mm -hmm. because they weren't. It wasn't a cheapened yeah. faith. You it know? wasn't an emotional decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah ex exactly. You know, and not that it isn't emotional when True. when we you know, but yeah. but this is like in the moment right now. Boom, everything's going on great and emotional, and then we do we go to the aisle and we're like, oh my goodness, yeah. you know, and and but what the Bible places the importance on <clears throat> is the eternal, not the immediate and the temporary. It, it, it places the importance on the eternal. Okay. So moving further into our history lesson here tonight, um, after Charles Finney, and it's important to go through this. Okay. Um, I know my voice is, is, and uh, the longer you listen, my voice gets more annoying um, to me and to everybody else, probably. But uh, after Charles Finney came a man by the name, you've probably heard this name. A lot of people have probably heard the name Billy Sunday. That's such a cool name. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, it's much better than John Whitaker or uh, Derek Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Billy no. Sunday. I mean, that, that sounds yeah. like a cool preacher. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and he was a baseball player. He was a professional baseball player. That's pretty cool, you yeah. know? Uh, what are we professionals at? You know, nothing. Yeah. Um, but anyways, he was a baseball player that was converted to Christianity, and eventually uh, he quit baseball to go on the road and preach as a revivalist. He he literally quit baseball to go do this. Mm -hmm. And so he was very animated. He would jump around the stage and into the crowd, yelling and sweating, Um he would he would jump on chairs and and kick them over, you know, and he had all kinds of crazy antics and he took the altar call then to the next level because it's like, oh, Finney did this. Well, I but I need to I need to add to that, you know. And so he started out by printing a prayer on the back of his crusade pamphlets that basically said, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and that you died on the cross for me. I now give my life to follow you. Okay, again, those words, there's nothing wrong with those words at all. Like, that mm -hmm. should be the cry of our hearts, mm -hmm. you know? But that doesn't sound bad at all. But he quickly became frustrated with the fact that he wasn't seeing high numbers of converts. So he made it very easy to get saved. So he started calling all sinners to the front of the auditorium or the church at the end of his message, he would have them all say this prayer and then tell them they are now saved from their sins. And so massive amounts of people responded in this way. And eventually, that wasn't enough. He made it even easier, <laughs> even easier. So he asserted that all people had to do at this point was come forward and shake his hand and that would be enough to imply that they were willing to turn to God and thus they were saved. So that handshake became the people's public profession of faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we're just getting like, man, what can we do to make this easier and easier and easier, you know? And so, without a doubt, Billy Sunday produced huge numbers. However, he had absolutely no way of knowing whom God had actually saved. Now, here's where, here's where things get a little bit more. You know, people don't. They're <laughs> behind Billy Sunday came another Billy yeah. and a Bill. Um, there was, there was, man, don't be messed up with this guy. Right. Maybe we just, just skip this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Our, they're they're going to be like, yeah, now y'all gone too far. Yes, yeah, you <laughs> have crossed the threshold now, you know. Uh, but there's Bill Bright and Billy Graham. Now, they continued on with the altar called in, in, in their crusades, and Billy Graham started out using what was once called the inquiry rooms. You know, these were the same type uh, situation that Finney had used at one time, and Billy Graham would invite sinners struggling to know the truth into a room uh, with counselors after his meetings. You know, they would be counseled one on one, prayed with, and then given a prayer to repeat. Other than given their prayer to repeat, that sounds great, 
you know, come in the room. Let's let me counsel you one on one, you know, and pray with you, you know. But soon Billy started having the people enter the room where they would all be led in the prayer together before the counseling. Okay. And and then eventually he then changed it once more as to be more effective to simply calling all sinners to the altar and leading them all in the prayer and removing the in inquiry rooms altogether. It, the inquiry rooms were a good idea because there was counseling, you know, in there, but now we're taking out the counseling part, the work and just streamlining Christianity, you know? And so through pressure and, and, and charisma and sheer numbers, the altar call and the sinner's prayer have become the normative way in recent years for people to supposedly come to Christ, supposedly mm -hmm. come to Christ. Numbers of, of converts are exaggerated and inflated by huge percentages all the time. And what we're ending up with, and I'm and, and I'm coming to the end of the of the history lesson here, you know. Uh, but what we're ending up with is a lost nation that claims to be saved, you know, widely, like eighty five percent saved, all because we continue to follow man's traditions on getting man uh, to God, all because uh, for less than a couple hundred years, these men that had these. Uh, by man's standards, great ideas. Yeah. You know? And, and, and we're not at all like they were not, I, I, I don't believe that they weren't purposely or like trying to lead people astray. Like I, I, I believe that these, these men like were, were doing their, like what they thought, but they themselves were deceived, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it was of, very of, possible, you know, it was very um, possible. Yeah. Yeah. So know. just, um, but like I said, and I, and I know like people are probably thinking, well, like my, my grandma, you know, she, you know, said she was saved. Like good things came out of these mm -hmm. re revival. Like, so, so like, yeah. we're not saying that every person that gave their life, right. you know, is, is, is destined for hell by, yeah. by, by any means. <laughs> Only like, God knows how things. many there truly were mm -hmm. that really did, you know, that they had a saving faith. And then this confession, you know, yep. I mean, you know, case in point again, us growing up and, you know, and, and, saying the sinner's prayer over mm -hmm. and over again, thinking these methods were, I mean, I went to revivals my whole childhood like these, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and here I am a, a man that knows he is saved, but now I know where the wrong was in the methods, yeah. but God, by his grace saved me, mm -hmm. you know? And, and is and has held you fast. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. Bible says hold fast, but it's really Him holding us fast, yep. isn't it? You know, so you know. But anyways, there's a there's a history lesson there for for everybody, you know. But um, it, it, it per persevering in the faith is what God calls for. It, it's not producing an, an immediate massive crop of so-called converts that only land on, on rocky soil, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, we know in Matthew 13, it's the parable of the sower in Matthew 13, where Jesus talks about the four types of soils that represent those who accept or appear to accept the gospel, you know? Um, but, um, I'm gonna let you re read like, like Matthew 13, verse 20 and 21. What's he say there? Yeah. Know? This, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word at one and at once receives it with joy. Mm -hmm. But since they do not have, they have no root, they last only a short time when trouble or persecution comes because of the world, they quickly fall away. And who is that speaking? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. That is him speaking, you know, and this is what we are producing in mass quantities today. Rocky soil converts. Yeah. And another problem like with the, the sinner's prayer, if, if, if it was that, it's, not necessarily if, if it's that simple, but like if it was that specific, like don't you think it'd be very specific in the Bible? 
Like, yes. like it, it would, right? Like, exactly. Like, so it's not like, I mean, it just can't, like, it's not in the Bible. Like if, if it was, it would, like, Jesus would have said, this is, this is what you say. This is how you pray. Yeah. This At is, least once. Right. Yeah. At least there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's just not, it's just conjecture. It's, you yeah. know, just putting things to get like, and, you know, trying to make it like we've talked about at the very beginning, something more palatable, more, yeah. you know, easy to take with you, like less convicting, less, you know, yeah. um, it's, it's easier to say, Hey, do the center prayer than to point out the wickedness and in people's hearts. Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. And we present it, we present the gospel like an assembly line, mm-hmm. you know, it's like a factory, like, boop, you know, we just, just, just pushing them out. And now they're coming out so fast. It's like that old, I love Lucy episode mm-hmm. where they're doing the, the chocolates on the conveyor belt and they can't, they're shoving them in their shirts mm-hmm. and their mouths and everything. It's yeah. like now the numbers are so huge, but, but they're just blown up, mm-hmm. you know? And so, so it's, it's come on down, say this prayer, shake my hand and boom, you are saved. We smack them on the butt and we <laughs> send them off as if we've done some great thing together. And, and what we're pumping out of our assembly line is plastic made in America, Christianity, you know, and, and the sad part is for the most part, I think we're okay with that. We're perfectly fine uh, with that. Even more, we defend it even more, we push it and even more, we can condemn pastors who do not do it. Yeah, we we condemn pastors who who want who want to share the truth, who who share the hard truths in love, because mm-hmm. um, because that's you know that's why we're we're sharing these truths. It's because we love people. We we want people to be saved. Like yeah. we, like we want just as like we we want the thousands of people right. Right? right like we we do want that it's not that we we just want a few people like it's it, like we just want this like right. select people no we we want everybody to come you know to to give their life to Christ but we want want them to know the truth and and stand on the truth so so they can hold fast they can you know yep. persevere like yep. so um and and live out their life with with uh with the fear and fear and trembling of god you know right right yeah absolutely so if you haven't figured it out by yet by now um we don't do this at new day you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh you know we, we don't um and we're trying to tell you why <laughs> but uh, uh here's what People need to, you need to hear this, like people (laughs) telling people that they must walk an aisle and say the sinner's prayer is a dangerous practice because unfortunately it very often produces false assurance and thus producing false converts and Mm -hmm. false converts. It is a very big reality. It is a true reality and is what we we're facing on massive, massive quantities, you know, uh, these days. And so what this practice does is it, it puts the power in the words that the person is saying and the act of coming forward. Mm-hmm. That makes you feel like you did something to earn something. You know, it, it really it really does, you know, mm-hmm. but there is nowhere in the New Testament that ever tells us that we have got to say, as you just said, a particular prayer to receive our salvation. It, it, it's, it's nowhere um, in there, nor is there any precedence whatsoever in the form of actions anywhere in the New Testament that shows us that this is what uh, happened. You know, so, so we read, you read a big chunk of Acts 2 already, mm-hmm. you know, um, and again, you know, in Acts 2, as Peter is preaching the gospel to everyone there and is telling them, you know, hey, you know, he's he's calling them out. You all crucified the Savior. You crucified the Savior. And he preaches this beautiful, in-their-face sermon. They begin to feel like, uh-oh. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so, so what happens then? Yeah, Acts 2, 37 to 38. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the people asked Peter, 
What, what do we, we do now? now? Hmm. And he said, come forward and repeat this prayer after me. <laughs> right. you know, right? Oh, man. We, yeah. Uh, oh, shoot. Scratch, I, scratch all that yeah. stuff we just said. We, we, we I just forgot that was there. Right. <laughs> he no, did not no, say did. that. No, he not did not say that at all. He said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, he did not say, repeat this prayer after me. So from verse 14 to 41, we see, call on the name of the Lord, repent and be baptized. You know, and then what is what Jesus says in, in Mark 1 15? The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. That is Jesus' words there. He says that. Repent. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And all these things can only be done if someone has already been brought to a true saving faith in Jesus Christ. We are not brought to a saving faith in Christ by simply repeating a prayer because we are told to do so. That is not how salvation works. We are not brought to a saving faith by that prayer and so yeah like I mean, the people there in acts like they were cut to the core yeah like i mean it said like they were cut to the core because peter just told them how wicked and sinful they were yeah absolutely absolutely they were cut to the heart they were cut to their very core as people because now they're starting to see it mm-hmm. you know he calls them out and and but the thing is like they're being told before that they were wicked people, right? But now the Holy Spirit is moving and cutting their <laughs> them to the core and they're believing it. Mm-hmm. So he is bringing them now to a saving faith in Christ with that knowledge where before this knowledge, even though it was being preached to the to people before, there was a hardening of their heart. They were blinded, you know, there were scales on their eyes, you know, and so so now those whose ears and eyes were opened by the Holy Spirit were just given the reality check of their sinful nature, and they're horrified in this moment. And that is grace. That is grace that they that they were horrified in this moment. So it's like, believe it or not, that is a gift from God because he was leading them in that moment to their, to their salvation. I mean, man, that just gets me, Mm -hmm. you know, Peter said the words, but the spirit led the way. Yep. You know? And so that tells us folks, I don't care what anybody says. Only God is in control of salvation, not man. Yep. Man cannot. Man is not in control of this. We can't conjure it up. We can't convince people. Like it God does call us to share, yes. but but he 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 does he does the bringing for like he yeah. you know like we're you know we might plant the seed but he waters it. He makes it grow. Yeah. He is he's the one that brings about salvation. He's the one that draws people to him. Yep. Like it's not going to be by our charisma. It's not going to be by our words. It's not going to be by our tricks and our antics or 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 any of that. Yep. It's going to be by his strength and his power. Nothing but by us, by us. Right. Totally. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 even says, and we're, we're getting to the end here. But Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Mm-hmm. Salvation is a gift from God, not man. Mm-hmm. It is from God. Yep. You know, so we got to stop telling people that they are saved by this prayer. Yep. They're they're not saved by a prayer. They're they're saved by the grace of God. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that is that is the only saving grace that we have. Yeah. Is it's God drawing us to him. Yeah. Yeah. That that's it. You know, so I I, I, I wish it would be as easy um as people going, Oh yeah. 
you're you're right. You know, uh, you, you've presented biblical mm. backing for this, but you can go online and you will find people giving supposed biblical backing for this, you know, and the thing is they have to twist it mm -hmm. to get there. We're just laying it out for what it, the word is saying, you know, and, and, and we're not making assertions over the word of God like, like man is doing here. You know, that's not to say that in our flawedness as men, we wouldn't ever do that or haven't ever done that accidentally. And we pray all the time, mm -hmm. Lord, if we ever, you got to correct us, mm -hmm. you got to correct us, you know? Um, but, uh, we can't do these things just simply because um, our ways make sense to us. But this is what man does. Like, this makes sense to me, so I'm going to not just practice it myself. I am going to go out there and get the mass, the masses, you know, to believe in it, you know. And so... Yeah, I mean, I kind of, and as we're rack, wrapping up, um, I'll say those those that are listening or watching, and 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 you're still not convinced, or like you're you you're you feel like okay, no, the Bible really does it really does back up the sinner prayer. Um, write us in the comments, yeah. e email us podcast at biblicalbrawlers dot com. Um, we we want to have that conversation with you. We. Um, so send those, those things. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely, we'll, we'll write back. We'll, um, yeah. you know, we'll respond with screw with scripture as well. Um, you know, so like dig in, if you feel stronger, you show us in the word, like, I mean, I'll, I'll challenge you. If, if you feel that strong, mm -hmm. you know, sh show us in, in the Bible, um, yeah, sixty six books to look through. Um, look <laughs> yeah. through it and, and show us. But it's I don't think you're gonna find it. Yeah. Um, I mean, show us what you're coming up with, and, and yeah. we'd love to have a conversation with you about it. Right. Um, always, but, you know. always we do. We mm -hmm. we so welcome that. You know, I mean, even to even people that are um, angry at us. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's fine. You know, hey, I mean, keep it cool somewhat. You right. Know? <laughs> You know, yeah. cuss us out and all mm -hmm. that stuff. You know, but um, you know, please, you know, we we we're here to help. That yep. is that is, uh, we're not here just because we're pretty faces. You know, yeah, I mean, it's most of it. It's I mean, one of the two. Ninety percent yeah. of it, you know, but ten percent of us you know, wants to help. No, yeah. um, but no, it, that's what we're here for is, mm -hmm. is is to help where we can. Um, you know, and so we're hoping that this podcast is doing that. We're hoping that this episode um, will will help people mm -hmm. to think, you know, biblically. Um, yeah. Know, too. So. And and two, we, we we do it because we want people to know the truth. We want people to have their eyes opened. Um, we love those people, but we also do it because we love the people that disagree with us. Yeah. You know, we yeah. absolutely. I mean, it is yeah. it is our heart for them um, t to be saved for their, yeah. um, and, and so even the ones, like I said, any ones that disagree and come kind of hard at us, like uh, we, we, we love you. Yeah, it's all good. You know, yeah. it's, it's we all, just, yeah. yeah, we absolutely we do. We absolutely love you. So, so the, your warning is that this is part one again, and that next week we'll be bringing part two to this. Um, so, uh, with all that said, remember any fool can be a worldly brawler. But it takes a wise man to be a biblical brawler. Love you guys. Love you. God bless you. See you next week. Hopefully. Part two.